Morning, uh, my name's Steve Fennell. I'm working with Survival and Medical Services at the Wilderness Gathering 2019. And what I'd like to talk to you today about is cardiac arrest in the wilderness. We know cardiac arrest is one of the most common emergencies that the ambulance service have to deal with today. And most commonly these happen in urban areas and in people's homes. Luckily it is a rare emergency in the wilderness, but it is something in wilderness first aid we need to be able to know how to deal with. And what I'd like to talk about is just very briefly about CPR, which those of you who've done first aid courses will have learnt about CPR. But more importantly, the second element to really improving survival rates in cardiac arrest, which is defibrillation. And defibrillators have become more and more commonplace over the last 20 years across the United Kingdom. Whilst they're not truly available in the wilderness, we know that a lot of people that do bushcraft and wilderness skills work in areas such as scout sites, public sites where actually these sites are more commonly getting defibrillators as part of their first aid setup and equipment. So what I'd like to do is just go through and talk through how to recognise a cardiac arrest, how to start treating it and how to use a defibrillator if one had been available. So what I'd like to do now is give you a demonstration of how to recognise whether someone is in cardiac arrest and then how to start CPR. So to recognise someone is in cardiac arrest, we follow a little process called Doctor's ABC, and that stands for danger, response, shout for help, airway, breathing and circulation. So the first thing I would do is just check for danger and make sure that it's safe for me to approach. Any knives and axes have been moved out of the way. I'd then check for a response by just gently tapping them on the shoulders to see if I can't wake them up. If I can't wake them up, they're unconscious. At this point, I would shout for help in case anyone else is near me but I need to know if they're breathing or not. So I would immediately move my hands to put a hand on my forehead and two fingers under the chin to tilt the head back and lift the chin to open the airway and move the tongue out from the back of the throat. I would put my head down next to theirs and I would look and I would listen and I would feel for normal breathing for no more than 10 seconds. If they're not breathing, I need to immediately start chest compressions. But first I need to ensure help has been called because just doing CPR is not necessarily going to save their life. So send someone to go and get an ambulance by calling 999 or get your phone out and call 999 if you have service. To start chest compressions, place the heel of your hand on the breastbone between the mid nipple line. Place your other hand on top of the first and interlock your fingers. Bring your shoulders up at 90 degrees above their chest and we're going to push down about five to six inches. That's about three inches in old money. And push down hard and fast. We're going to push at a speed of about two per second. And we would continue pushing. And conventional first aid, we would stop at 30 compressions and then we would give two breaths. However, for purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to continue with compressions because we know that that is still pushing blood around the body and getting the oxygen that is in that blood to the brain, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the spleen, the liver. And we know that that's good enough for 10 to 15 minutes compared to conventional first aid of compressions and mouth to mouth. So we know that CPR will buy you time. It's getting oxygenated blood around the body. But the chances of it restarting your heart on its own is incredibly rare. The key thing we need to get to someone is a defibrillator. And we know that for every minute we delay a defibrillator, you take 10% off the chance of it working. So time is the crucial factor. And we appreciate in the wilderness, this is gonna be a real challenge. However, if you are on a site which has a defibrillator or you know where a public access defibrillator is, then get it. The quicker you get it there, the better that person's chances of survival. People often think of defibrillators as the, the machines in hospitals with big electric paddles, but long gone are the day of those machines. Now even in hospitals we use defibrillators that are really easy to use and absolutely anyone can use a defibrillator. So what I'd like to do now is demonstrate how to use an automated external defibrillator. The first thing you should do when someone arrives with that defibrillator is open the case and turn the machine on. As you turn the machine on, it's going to talk to you. Listen and follow its instructions. Call emergency medical services now. Adult mode. Follow the voice prompt calmly. Remove all clothing from chest and stomach. Rip clothing if necessary. 
So if there's any clothing, remove it so you can expose the chest. Take out the pads from the bottom of the device. Tear open the pads packaging. Look closely at the picture on each pad. Peel off the pad labeled one and stick to the bare skin of the patient, exactly as shown in the picture. Peel off the pad labeled two and stick to the bare skin of the patient, exactly as shown in the picture. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. So when it says don't touch, don't touch. Shock advised. Stand clear. Press the flashing orange button now. So before Deliver pressing shock the shock button, now. just make sure everyone is out of the way. Stand clear. Shock delivered. Begin CPR now. And immediately Press once you've delivered the shock, recommence chest compressions. First. Some defibrillators have a metronome to help you keep in time with the beat. System shutting down. And you would continue that CPR for two minutes. At the end of two minutes, and the defibrillator will time this for you, the defibrillator will reanalyze the heart. And each time it analyzes, whether it be the first time, the tenth time, the hundredth time, it will decide whether it's going to deliver a shock or not deliver a shock. Whether it delivers a shock or not, if a patient remains unresponsive, recontinue with those compressions. Defibrillators are perfectly safe and easy to use. They won't deliver a shock to someone's heart that does not need a shock. The worst thing you can do with a defibrillator is not try to use it. So I hope that short demonstration of CPR and a defibrillator has been useful for you. Please do attend a course to learn how to use these skills effectively, competently, and most importantly, confidently. My name's Steve Fennell. I'm from Survival and Medical Services. Please do look us up if you want any further information. Thank you.